Well, hi there. I'm here today with one of my very favorite salamanders, which is the spotted salamander. And there are so many reasons that I love these guys. First of all, I really like the size that they are. They're a good sized salamander, actually. There are a lot of salamanders that are much bigger, I mean, some that get up to about six feet long. Uh, others like tiger salamanders get bigger than this, but most salamanders are actually way smaller than this. Uh, a huge group of salamanders are, are in fact lungless. It means they don't have any lungs, they, they breathe entirely through their skin, and that's only possible if you're very, very small, and so they're all very little. This is one of the lunged salamanders, from a group of salamanders called the mole salamanders, and so for a salamander, it's huge. This spotted salamander comes to us from Animal Ark in Worm, Utah, which is one of the great pet stores. If you're ever in the neighborhood, you should definitely check them out. And they also can ship nationwide, so if there's something you're looking for, it's actually a pretty good chance they've got it. They've got a great selection of rad stuff. And a kookaburra. I love their face. It is arguably the most adorable face in the animal kingdom. And they're just beautiful. I love that jet black color with those yellow spots. They're just such glorious little animals, and they actually make great pets, but are they the right pet for you? To help you figure that out, we're going to break this down into our five categories, which are handleability, care, hardiness, availability, and upfront costs. Overall, we give the Spotted Salamander a score of 3.8 out of 5. So the first Thing that we should talk about is handleability. And we give the spotted salamander a score of 4 out of 5 for handleability, which honestly is probably about as high of a score as it is possible to give to an amphibian. These guys are as good for handling as an amphibian could possibly be. They're, they're not going to bite you. They don't even really have any claws with which to scratch you. They're not going to run away, they're not going to jump, they're just going to hang out with you. Uh, the hardest thing you'd ever have to do is like the tiniest little bit of treadmilling. They're perfect for handling, except for the fact that they are amphibians. And just like all amphibians, they have got a permeable skin through which moisture, but also chemicals that might be on your hands, can penetrate. And so whatever's on your hands could actually end up inside of their body. As a result, if you ever decide to handle your salamanders, you should make sure that your hands are very clean, not just clean from dirt and things, but, but also washed off very, very thoroughly so there's no residue of soap or anything like that on them. And even then, just keep handling to a minimum. Other than that, though, they're perfect. They're perfect for handling. When it comes to care, we give the spotted salamander a score of 4 out of 5. The care for these guys is actually relatively simple, but it does require some daily or near daily maintenance. They're definitely going to need an aquarium that holds humidity fairly well. I would recommend a glass aquarium because these guys are going to burrow, and so most of the time you're not going to be able to see them, and they're not very good for handling. So when they do come out, and they will, you're going to want to be able to see them, and if you keep them in a tub, which is another perfectly reasonable way that you can keep them, you're probably not even going to see them when they come out, and then all you really have is a hole in the ground that makes insects disappear. No matter what kind of enclosure you use, glass or plastic tub, make sure it has a good lid, because amphibians in general, when they start to get a little bit dry, they get very tacky. So even if they don't have the toe pads like you see on a tree frog, almost any amphibian at certain times can climb right up glass or plastic. And if you don't have a good lid on there, your amphibian will get away. And a big problem with amphibians is that they can't survive very long outside of their humid enclosure. So, you know, you could lose a gecko and you might have a couple weeks to track it down in your house before it would die of dehydration. That is not the case with the salamander. It could be dead within a few hours. And so you definitely want to make sure that you have a good lid on there. You are going to need to feed them several times a week. They're going to eat insect feeders and, and worms. They'll honestly eat about anything that moves. Amphibians tend to be fairly optimistic about what they can swallow. So just keep that in mind when deciding which insect feeders to offer them. And we have a whole video on great insect feeders. Uh, you should definitely check that out because 
all of those would be pretty good, at least in moderation for a spotted salamander. One of the probably daily or near daily maintenance things that you're going to need to do is going to be that you're going to need to mist the enclosure. Uh, you can do that either with a misting bottle or you could buy a misting system, then you wouldn't have to do it manually as regularly. That would help if you were going to go out of town for a weekend or something like that. It should be enough moisture so that you can keep your salamander hydrated and the humidity is high, but not so much that it soaks the enclosure or you might start to have problems with mold. They also should have access to a water bowl that they can get in and all of the water that you use for a spotted salamander or any amphibian needs to be dechlorinated and treated. You can, you can buy drops that you add to the water at basically any sort of aquarium store that sells things for fish because fish need this as well. Also you can buy uh, treated water, you can buy purified water at the grocery store. Just make sure you don't get distilled water because that can actually kill them. So this is very important. Purified water, not distilled water. They do really well in a bioactive sort of enclosure. Uh, we actually have a, a great video on how to build a bioactive enclosure and, and something like that would be really great for them. I would recommend something with more floor space and less vertical space than the enclosure depicted in that video. And another thing is I would add a drainage layer. That, that enclosure was built for something more like a crested gecko where you're not going to be really getting the, the ground very moist at all. You can do without a drainage layer. For these guys, you're definitely going to want a drainage layer. And we'll do a video in the future on how to build one. There's probably a lot of tutorials online already as well. You better just like and subscribe just in case, though, so that you're aware when that video comes out. In fact, click the little bell, too, so, so that that notification comes right to you. You can watch it like seconds after it comes out. That's what I'd do. When it comes to hardiness, we give the spotted salamander a score of 4 out of 5. They're really just as solid as an amphibian can be, especially for an amphibian that is generally wild caught. They have a very long lifespan for an amphibian, uh, in excess of 10 years, potentially considerably longer than that, and that is a long time for a salamander. Really, given proper care, the biggest threats to them are just going to be things like chemicals on your skin, chemicals potentially in the water, also excessive heat, dehydration, freezing temperatures, these sorts of things that might kill them. They also could be exposed to certain pathogens, bacteria and fungus that, that could harm them very much. So you're going to want to be careful about quarantine with any new amphibians that come into your collection. And given that these come from the wild, it is possible that they could come already with some of these things. It's not super common, but it is a concern. In isolation, at least after a quarantine period, Given the proper care, a spotted salamander should really thrive for you in captivity. When it comes to availability, we give the spotted salamander a score of 3 out of 5. These are one of the more available, at least large salamander species. In the United States, probably tiger salamanders are the only considerably more available salamander species out there. And these are very similar to a tiger salamander in a lot of ways. They're just a little bit smaller. Like I said, they're all wild caught, which is never ideal. It's not as big of a deal, at least if you live in North America, as it is for other species that are imported from overseas, because their journey to your door is much shorter. They're less likely to be stressed and dehydrated than they would be if they came from, say, Africa or Asia. Also, one of my big issues with wild caught animals is just the impact that it can have on wild populations, and that is still an issue with these guys though management in North America of wild fauna tends to be pretty good, so they're probably not being over-harvested. You're going to be able to find these guys occasionally at pet stores uh, and, and sometimes at reptile expos as well. Online, you'll be able to find one almost any time you want one. When it comes to upfront costs, we give the spotted salamander a score of 4 out of 5. When it comes to buying the animal itself, it's one of the less expensive salamanders you could possibly get. There probably are a few that are cheaper, but this is a fairly affordable animal. The enclosure can be very inexpensive, especially if you go with a tub. You could make a glass enclosure that is really beautiful and amazing, and that'll cost some money, but it's still not an excessive amount of money for such a cool animal. I would recommend a glass enclosure with a good lid. You may need to put some glass or other sort of plastic on top 
to regulate how much humidity is lost during the day by your enclosure. That'll vary somewhat based on where you are. If you live in the desert, you'll need to do that for sure. If you live somewhere like Florida, where it's very humid, you probably don't need to worry about maintaining humidity nearly as much. You'll definitely want a water bowl. Uh, they're gonna need a place that they can soak. They're gonna need a substrate like eco earth and sphagnum moss that will hold hold a lot of moisture without rotting, without molding very easily. You're gonna need a misting bottle or some sort of a misting system. You're gonna need water conditioner. Uh, I would get that no matter what. You can still buy purified water at the grocery store. That's also a great option. Lights, and this is a great thing about amphibians almost across the board. Any lights that you use will pretty much be for the benefit of your viewing pleasure and to keep any plants that you might have in with them thriving. However, the animal itself only needs a tiny bit of ambient light that it could probably get from any room in which you would be housing your salamander, unless you keep it inside of some sort of a bunker. And these are the reasons that the spotted salamander gets a score of 3.8 out of 5. Again, that's not a super high score, but amphibians have certain drawbacks to them that are going to prevent any of them from scoring too much higher than that. This is really one of the best pet amphibians you could possibly get. And that's actually why they were on our list of five of the best pet amphibians you could get because they are so cool. As always, like and subscribe. Uh, and make sure you click the little bell so you get notifications when more cool amphibian and salamander and of course reptile videos come out. And thank you to all of you on Patreon for making so many amazing things possible for us. We are really, really, really grateful for your contribution and, and your support for us. So thank you, and we hope to see you real soon. The long and winding road oh, dun, 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 dun. led me to your door. Join yeah. Michelle. You guys. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Is it in the, the footage? Yeah, it's weirded out. <laughs> it's creepy, actually. It looks like one of those... you got a hole in your face. <laughs> it looks like one of those mirrors at the carnival. Mm.